Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the matrix of a linear transformation. Okay, so in the previous video what we saw is that if we have a linear transformation T which is mapping one vector space capital V onto another vector space capital W where both of these vector spaces V and W are both finite dimensional and over the field capital F, then if you have a basis of the vector space capital V, which we'll call B, and a basis for the vector space capital W, which we'll call C, then it is possible to describe the linear transformation with a matrix. And the matrix is specific to these two bases that you are using uh, to describe uh, the vectors in these two vector spaces. Okay, and what this matrix will do is it will multiply coordinate vectors of vectors in the vector space capital V here and turn them into the coordinate vectors of the vectors in capital W that those vectors will be mapped onto by the linear transformation. Okay, so what we're going to consider now in this video is how do we transform that matrix, which we've called A, if we're going to change the bases that we're using? What if we want to change the bases we're using? How do we change the matrix A uh, to update it uh, for our new bases? Okay, so this is the next topic. So let me draw out firstly exactly what we're trying to do. Okay, so we've got our linear transformation here, T which is mapping our vector space capital V onto the vector space capital W. And previously we had this basis B uh, and the basis C, and we were describing the vectors in capital V as their coordinate vectors with respect to this basis capital B, and we were describing the coordinate, uh, the, sorry, the vectors of the uh, codomain vector space W here with respect to the basis C, so as their coordinate vectors with respect to the basis C. And what we had is we had this matrix representation of our linear transformation, which we're calling A, which would take any coordinate vector of a vector in the domain vector space, multiply it with by this A, and you'd get the uh, coordinate vector of the vector in W that the vector that this coordinate vector is representing would be mapped onto by the linear transformation. Okay, so what we're now considering then is what if we have some basis B bar here and some basis uh, C bar for W and we now want to work out the new matrix which we'll call A bar which will take a coordinate vector in V relative to this new basis and map it onto the coordinate vector of W with respect to this new basis C bar that the linear transformation would do. That is now our question. Okay, so uh, let me firstly just put a little bit more notation here. So I'm going to call the basis vectors in V bar the barred vectors. So we'll have V1 bar, V2 bar, all the way up to Vn bar here. So remember, you'll have the same number of them as you had in the basis B, because the size of a basis is always the same in a finite dimensional vector space, which is equal to that parameter, the dimension of the vector space. So here's my basis B bar, and then uh, say, similarly, I'll have my basis C bar here, and these will be the barred vectors as well. So we'll call them little w1 bar, little w2 bar, all the way up to little wm bar like so. So these are my uh, new bases of my domain and codomain vector space. Okay, so how am I going to find this new matrix which is going to take coordinates with respect to the basis B bar and map them onto coordinate vectors with respect to the basis C bar, uh, which is consistent with the linear transformation T? How am I going to get it from my matrix capital A? Well, this is my strategy. I want a matrix A bar which will take in coordinates with respect to the basis B bar, so I'll call the coordinate vector of a vector in V with respect to this basis, the bar basis X bar, I'm going to multiply it by A bar and get a coordinate vector in the um, codomain vector space according to the C bar basis, which I'll call Y bar here. So this is what I'd like. I'd like the A bar. So how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to use this here. Because if I could take my coordinate vector of a vector in the vector space V with respect to the B bar basis and first turn it 
into a coordinate vector with respect to the b basis, i.e. if I could take x bar and turn it into x, then what I could do is just say, okay, now that I've got this vector described in terms of its coordinates with respect to the basis b, I can then act the matrix A on it. This will map it into the codomain vector space, and it will give me the coordinate of the answer vector with respect to the basis c. If I could then just turn that into what that vector is with respect to the c bar basis, I, if I could turn y into y bar, and then I'd be in business, okay, and the overall thing that I'd have is a uh, transformation which would take me from x bar to y bar. So that's going to be my strategy here. So therefore it becomes necessary to look at how do we transform between these bases. Okay, now we addressed this in a previous video in this playlist on vector space entitled change of basis. So I'm not going to go over it in full, I'm just going to give you the answer. Okay, so if you have uh, a vector in the vector space V, for instance, okay, described according to its basis B. So we've got its coordinate vector X here, and we want to turn it into its coordinate vector with respect to the basis B bar. Again, okay, I know we're actually trying to do the opposite, but we'll do it this way because we started with these bases and we're going into these bases, and it's the standard notation that people use. So just go along with it for now. Okay, if I want to do that, the way that you can do it is by multiplying uh, the coordinate vector with respect to the basis B by a matrix which we'll call P here, the P matrix. And I'll remind you of what the components of the P matrix actually are. So P is going to be an M by M matrix that will look like this. It will have components P11, P12, all the way along to P1N, and then it will go all the way down to pn1, pn2, all the way along to pnn, like so. Okay, so here is our p matrix, and where do these components come from? Okay, so remember, the columns of this p matrix, these correspond to the linear combinations that the old basis vectors x, the old basis vectors, sorry, of the basis b would be relative to uh, the new basis vectors of B bar. Okay, so what I mean by this is if I have a vector in my original basis, so if I have some vector VI from my original basis, it will equal a linear combination of the vectors in my new basis. It will have coordinates relative to my new basis, and it's the columns of this matrix are made up by uh, those coordinates of the uh, old basis vectors relative to the new basis vectors. Okay, so VI would correspond to the ith column. Okay, so it would uh, be P1I, uh, uh, and then we'd have V bar 1 plus P2I, V2 bar, plus all the way along to P, and then we'd go down to N, so it'll be NI, V, m bar, like so. Okay, so it's corresponding to the if column, basically, the entries of the if column, okay, are the coordinates of the if basis vector of, of the original basis with respect to our new basis. So where do these components of the matrix P come from? They come from the coordinates of the basis vectors of the old basis relative to our new basis. Okay, so that's where this P matrix comes from, and if you aren't familiar with that, watch my video on change of basis, we go through and derive uh, this matrix P. Okay, so I have then uh, a matrix P which I can use to take a coordinate vector with respect to the unbarred basis and turn it into a coordinate vector with respect to the barred basis. Okay, so this is how I can change the uh, basis that I'm using to describe any vector in the vector space capital V. And similarly, for the vector space capital W, there will exist some matrix which I'll call Q here, which will take in a coordinate vector y, so a coordinate vector of a vector with respect to uh, the basis C, and turn it into a coordinate vector with respect to the basis C bar here. Okay, and that's the y bar here. And this matrix Q will be an m by m matrix this time, because remember the dimension of the codomain vector space W is just m, not n. Okay, right, 
So I've got these two expressions. Now, this is fantastic. This is going the right way. This is taking a uh, coordinate vector with respect to the unbarred basis and turning it into its coordinate vector with respect to the barred basis. This is not the right way. Okay, I want to go from the barred uh, basis to the unbarred basis. So what you now need to do is invert this relationship. Okay, you will always be able to invert this matrix because of the fact that you can always go between describing vectors in a vector space between two bases. Okay, you can always change between the two coordinates. Okay, so there must exist the inverse matrix to this. Uh, so indeed, what we can now say is that the coordinates in terms of the unbarred basis will be this matrix P inverse times the coordinates with respect to the barred basis. So remember the definition of P. The definition of P is the matrix that takes the coordinates uh, from being in the unbarred basis to being in the barred basis. So we just need its inverse to take the uh, coordinates uh, of the barred basis with respect to the barred basis back into the coordinates with respect to the unbarred basis. Again, okay, that inverse matrix will always exist because of the nature of the problem. You always must be able to turn the coordinates back again. And uh, what is the matrix going to be that will do this? Well, it has to be the inverse of that one. That's very easy to come to the conclusion of. Okay, so if I start off then with co coordinates with respect to the bar basis, I can now convert them into the coordinates of that vector with respect to the unbar basis. Now what I want to do is say, what is this vector actually going to be mapped onto in the co-domain vector space? So I can now apply this relationship here and get that the uh, vector which x bar will be mapped onto by the linear transformation with respect to the unbarred basis in the co-domain vector space will equal a p inverse x bar like so. And then finally, what I just want to do then is turn my coordinates back into the barred basis. So all I'll then do is that y bar is equal to q a p inverse x bar. Okay, and this matrix multiplication, which does make sense because p inverse here will be an n by n matrix, a here will be an m by n matrix, and q here will be an m by m matrix, so the dimensions here are all working out fantastically. This will now be my matrix, which I'll call A bar. Okay, and overall, what will its uh, dimensions be? It will be an m by n matrix, the two final ones, because this one is cancelling with this one, this one is cancelling with this one, and overall, it will be an m by n matrix, which of course we know it must be. Okay, right, so there is how you turn uh, the matrix with respect to two certain bases, a basis of the uh, domain vector space and a basis of the co-domain vector space, into a matrix with respect to new, two new different bases of my domain and co-domain vector space. And they require these matrices for changing basis, basically, Q and P, okay, which tell you how to change the basis. So A bar here is going to equal QA P inverse. So that is therefore how you change the matrix which is representing your linear transformation if you want to change the bases that you're using for your domain vector space and your co-domain vector space. Now I just want to stress, we have not changed the linear transformation at all. We've just changed the matrix which we are using to represent the linear transformation and that's because this matrix, what it does is it takes coordinates associated with vectors in the domain vector space and maps them onto coordinates associated with vectors in the uh, co-domain vector space and that's in accordance with the linear transformation, i.e. it's mapping them onto the correct um, coordinates in the co-domain vector space. However, of course, it, what it actually is in nature, the components of that matrix, are completely going to be determined by which basis you're using for the coordinates in the domain vector space and which basis you're using for the 
co uh, coordinates in the codomain vector space and that's why this is changing only because we're changing the basis and therefore the form of it that we need to describe the linear transformation is changing but the linear transformation has always been fixed at all points through this argument we haven't changed the linear transformation just the matrix which we're using to actually compute the linear transformation in terms of different bases Okay, uh, so uh, we will conclude there and end our discussion of uh, the matrix of a linear transformation.